Hi. So when you start working in Cubase, there are a lot of things to learn. And one of them is the terminology that's used by Cubase specifically. You see terms like clips, parts, events, regions used all over the place. And if you don't know how they differ, it may be hard to use Cubase to its full potential. Also, when you have experience in some other doors like Pro Tools or Logic, for example, these terms may be different from what you're used to. So let's dive into the wonderful world of Cubase's files, events, clips, parts, regions, and more. So let's start with audio files since that's probably a concept that we're all familiar with, right? When we record audio, be it in Cubase or something else, it usually ends up as an audio file on our hard disk. And that file is something that we may want to import into Cubase. Let's have a look. So over here you can see the mix down folder of a previous project that I did for this channel. So let's imagine that we want to import this file into a new Cubase project which I have open already. And let's not do that directly in the project window, but let's start by doing that in the pool so I can gradually introduce you to some of the concepts in Cubase. So to open the pool we can push Ctrl P and you can see that my pool is currently empty. So I can now drag this audio file into the pool to the audio folder so that it's available for Cubase in this project. Now, as you can see, Cubase comes up with an import options dialog asking me if I want to copy this file to the project folder of my new project. And this is always a smart thing to do so that you keep all the audio files that belong to your project together so that you can easily back it up, put it on a USB drive and give it to somebody, for example, and that your audio files for your project are not spread all over the hard disk. Now, Cubase file management is an entire subject in itself, and I have a separate video about that as well, which I'll link in the description below. But let's continue importing this file into Cubase, and let's copy the file to the project folder. So what you can now see over here in the pool is that Cubase has imported breaking free ATR102. And if you look on the hard disk of my new project, you can see that there is actually a file breaking free ATR102 in the audio subdirectory of this project. That was the copying part that Cubase has done. Now what we're seeing in the pool is not actually a representation of the file, but this is what Cubase calls an audio clip, which is one level up. And an audio clip can actually refer to multiple files if you, for example, want to do any edits on this audio clip. Cubase always remembers the original audio file that this audio clip is based on. You can see it here on path. But let's edit this audio clip by double clicking on the waveform over here, which opens a sample editor. And let's now, for example, mute a little part here in the middle. Apply a process called silence so that you can easily see it in the waveform. And you have now done an edit on this audio clip. However, this edit is not actually in the original file. The original file is kept and the edit is also kept separately. If you look on the hard disk, you can see my audio directory still contains the full breaking free WAV file as big as it was previously. However, there's now also an edits directory which contains a new WAV file. And if you look at the size, you can see that it is a lot smaller and that's because this file contains only the edited part. Going back to the pool, you can see that there is still one single audio clip. It has a bit of the representation of the waveform and you can see that that audio clip actually contains the silence that we created by editing the file. It still remembers the path to the original audio file, but the audio clip now refers to two files, the original audio file and the little edit file, which is for the small part of the file that we edited. Fortunately, Cubase keeps this behavior completely transparent for you. You don't have to worry about the fact that there are actually multiple files behind this one audio clip, because when you play the audio clip, Cubase will seamlessly switch from one file to the other to play it back correctly. Now, next up is the term audio event, because if we drag this audio clip in the project window, you can see that Cubase creates this audio event, which refers to the audio clip. And you can also see that over here, because this is the name of the audio clip. And officially the Cubase manual says that the audio event actually triggers the playback of the associated audio clip. And since the audio clip contained our edit, the audio event also contains our edit. Now, currently the event contains the full audio clip, but you can of course just make the event play part of the audio clip. You can duplicate it on another track. And now both events refer to the same audio clip, even when they're not equally long. If you look at the pool, there is still only one audio clip in the pool, which we know refers to two files on disk because we did a small edit on this. Now I just showed you that I imported audio into the pool and then from the pool onto the project window, but you can also do that directly, of course. For example, let's import another file directly into the project window, the same song, but then with the mix hat extension. 
And you can see that Cubase asks us again, do we want to copy this file into the project folder? Yes. So if we now check the audio folder of our new project, you can see that we have two audio files. And in the edits folder, there's still only that one small file because that's where we did the edit. If we look in the pool, you can see that there's now also a second audio clip in our pool from the file we just imported and it's used in one place in the project, which is this track, and the other audio clip is used in two places. Furthermore, you can also see that this first audio clip has been edited by this little symbol here in the status column. Now let's imagine that we want to edit this event over here. For example, let's say that we want to silence this part of the event as well. Let's go audio processes silence. And Cubase now comes up with a question. The project contains events that use the same audio material as the events in this editor. Click new version if processing should apply only to the edited event. So if I now push continue, I will actually edit the single audio clip. So both tracks on which I have this audio clip at the moment would contain the edit. However, if I only want to affect my second track called audio 01 over here, then I have to push new version. So let's do that. And you can see this is now also silent. On the first track, you can see that I still have audio without that second piece of silence. The first piece of silence is still on both. And if we look in the pool again, you can see that there's now actually a second audio clip created for this track that we just edited. And again, that audio clip also refers to the original file on disk. It shows that it has been edited. If you look in the edits directory on the hard disk, you can see that there's now a second edit. So we now have this second audio event, which refers to this audio clip in the pool. You can also see that over here in the name and also over here. And this audio clip in the pool refers to three files, our original file, the first edit file from this little edit over here, and the second edit file from this edit over here. Now you can also change the reference between an audio event and an audio clip. For example, this audio event references this clip like we saw, but if I want to change that, I can also drag and drop while holding shift this audio clip onto this event. And then you can see that the second edit over here is gone. And both events are again referring to the same audio clip. In the pool, you can see that this same audio clip has two uses in the project. And yeah, the audio clip with the two edits has no uses in the project at the moment. But let's undo that and go back to the audio clip with two edits. Now at some point, if you want to have this as one file on your hard disk again, because for example, you want to use it in another project or send it to somebody, for example, then you can do that by choosing bound selection, audio, bound selection. Cubase will then ask you whether you want to replace the event. So let's say yes. And now you can see that the contents still looks the same, but this actually refers to a different audio clip because Cubase created another audio clip for this, audio 01. You can see that over here as well and in the name. It has one use in the project. There are no edits on this audio clip and it refers to this audio file on your hard disk. So now you can send this audio with all edits to somebody else as a single file. Now, before we go on to audio parts and audio regions and more, if you like this video or find it useful in any way, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it gets shown to more people. And what also helps is if you subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you get notified when I post another video. For even more support, you can use the virtual tip jar, also known as the super thanks button below the video. Or if you intend to buy anything at one of these stores, if you click the affiliate link in the description to one of these stores first before buying over there, I will get a small commission of whatever you buy without any additional cost to you, which is always highly appreciated. Let's move on to audio parts. And let's get rid of these two tracks here, just to make the project clean again. Because let's for example say that we have a number of events like this on our track. And let's say that you always want to have these events in this position exactly, but you just want to be able to move them together or easily copy them to another track. You can select them all and then go to audio events to part. And as you can see, they are now one item in Cubase, an audio part, which you can also copy to another track if you want to, etc. Now, if you want to edit the events in a part, you can also do that by double clicking the audio part and then Cubase opens the audio part editor. And over here, well, you can move them or process the individual events within the part in a different way. Let's for example, get rid of this one. And now you can see that in this audio part, the third event has gone. However, in this audio part, there are still three events. So the audio parts are really independent of each other. 
If you're tired of your audio part and you want to go back to events, that's also possible by selecting the audio part and then going audio dissolve part and you're back to your original events. Now Cubase also allows you the ability to mark a certain part of an audio clip and that's called an audio region. Let's have a look. For example, if I double click on this audio event, it opens the sample editor for the associated audio clip. And if I now open the right side over here in Cubase 13, you can see that I have controls to add, remove regions, select a region, play a region. So I can now do a selection over here. For example, let's take that first part and add a region for that. Maybe I want to call this opening line. Let's maybe call this first one. And maybe I want to call this chorus. So you can now, by clicking over here, you can see that it now actually selects the region that you have highlighted. But you can also play back a region with this button and you can also remove a region again with this button. Now the regions are also visible in the pool. If I open the pool again with Ctrl P, you can see that this audio clip over here now contains two regions, verse one and chorus. And you can now drag a region into the project window, drag the other region into the project window over here. And you get new audio events in Cubase referring to exactly the regions that you indicated in the audio clip. Now there's actually more areas in Cubase where the term events is used. And one particular area in which you both have events and parts, and that's in MIDI. So let's have a look and add a MIDI track. Because for MIDI, an event is actually a single MIDI note or a single controller message that you get when you record MIDI or draw it with your mouse. Let's draw a MIDI part by using the pencil tool. So I now have one MIDI part and a MIDI part is a container for MIDI events. And I can add the MIDI events to this part by double clicking it, which opens the key editor in my case. And with the draw tool, I can now draw in MIDI events, single notes. So on MIDI tracks, the container here is called a MIDI part and the individual notes are called the MIDI events. Now there's more areas in Cubase in which you have just events. For example, on an automation track in Cubase, the little points that you have on your track are also called automation events. But I have a separate video on that, which I'll also link in the description. Now all in all, I think Cubase makes it pretty easy to deal with these concepts because it kind of hides a lot of the complexity of it behind the scenes. And the use of these features is pretty transparent, but it's also quite powerful. And especially when you touch on some of the more advanced features in Cubase or run into some menu items, you will probably see these terms and at least you now know what they mean and how they differ. Now, if you made it this far into this video, I applaud you and you must be really into getting to know Cubase well. And in that case, I think it's also absolutely essential to know about what Cubase can do with chords because the chord functionality in Cubase is probably second to no other door. And I've made a whole series of videos about what Cubase can do with chords going from the chord track to chord pads and much, much more. So I'll link that over here. Check it out. Enjoy. And see you soon.